Take me like a lover. Fuck me in the ass tonight. Anyway, speaking of taking it backward. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm actually hitting the home stretch. I was a little bit iffy the other night. Now, I'm doing another book clip. Just simply because I want to upload something. And I want to go over this. Um, now, the other night I was kind of like, uh, part two is kind of fucked up and blah, blah, blah. I'm actually feeling much better about it today. Just saying. Um, which is actually very good because I've decided that when I do book four, it's going to start... Because each one that I've done, two... Let's see, what, two, three, and now four. Every opening story is kind of... Every first chapter, I should say. Because there's the prologue at the beginning. Um, which technically should be the same thing. But I did kind of almost like a backstory prologue for each one of those. But whatever. But the very first chapter of each one is a continuation from the last book. So in other words, it, it literally just kind of flows right into the next one. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the stories are, like, top-notch. Like, the first story isn't, like, always the best, but it's, like, um, again, this one was uh, going out to dinner with Dale T. So it was like, okay, it's just more of the same from book two. Well, I think for book four, because the way book three ends, I had, I've just moved here... And I think I'm going to have to talk about the very first chapter when the Hobbit done called the cops on me. <laughs> she fucking called the cops on me. Stupid fucking bitch. Said I threatened her. Said I threatened her. <laughs> and this is a story about when, um, when I, I was literally laying here right in the bed just like I am right now and all of a sudden I hear, Eat her! Eat her! Eat her! From the hallway. And I'm like, oh, fucking shit, Graham. What do you want? Because she just, it's like every five minutes, she was like, Peter? Are you up there, Peter? Yeah, Graham, I'm still here. Where the fuck do you think I went? Whatever. Anyway, she's, I finally get up, go to the hallway, and I'm like, Graham, what do you want? And she's like, Peter, the phone call. The phone call for you, Peter. Because this is when I had just moved. I didn't have a phone. So they were calling her to get to me and apparently unless it was somebody jagging me it could have been one of her kith and kin jagging me I don't know I go down there I say hello and it's like oh this is the state police blah 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 you know we want to talk to you about threats that you made and I'm like what the fuck are you talking about I make no damn threat I make no damn threat what the fuck are you talking about anyways Oh, and this is, this is a story where, where Graham... Because she had two phones. I picked up the one in the living room. And I'm, I'm, I go into the living room because I want to I talk and hear. And I want... Because she kept going, Who is it, Peter? Who is it, Peter? Who is it, Peter? Peter, Peter, who is it? Peter, who is it? I'm like, Graham, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to listen. listen just, I'll tell you when it's over. So finally I had to walk away from her. Well, she picks up the other phone. here, beep. And she picks up the other phone. Then she starts holding the phone to her fucking mouth as she breathes. So I'm talking to this supposed police officer about death threats to the Hobbit. And Grandma's going, <gasps> on the other fucking end. And I'm like, Graham, you got to get off the phone. I cannot hear. You're breathing into the phone. It was just, oh my God. Who is it, Peter? Who is it, Peter? I'm like, Jesus, Graham. If you shut the fuck up a minute, I could find out. And it was like, oh my god. <laughs> so that's going to be that story. That's how book four is going to open up. Um, Right now, I have gone through a another edit. I have done parts one and part two. I'm working on part three right now. I only have 39% battery life. Oh, this battery, dude. It is a fucking bitch in a hold. Like, I literally have to go charge it, sit here for a couple hours, go charge it, go watch some TV, 
come back. I've been doing it like back and forth. Instead of sitting here like two or three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, eight hours like you're supposed to. No, I'm here for like three hours. Because shitty ass fucking battery. <sighs> and the problem is, even if I had it plugged in, because I've been being like, oh, broke it in, broke it in. Even if I plugged it in, it still doesn't work. I have to, I have to, I have to shut it down, not off, but to, shut, yeah, I've, whatever. I've discussed that before. Anyways, Whew. okay. So I've added some new, um, I've added some new chapters. I've added a lot of new chapters actually. Um. Ah, shit, let me let me go through the rundown again, just because I want to. And uh, I know I've done this like every single time, and it's probably getting old. But eh, you know what? Like I said, I'm just trying to post something to YouTube anyway. So, and I'm just working this shit out in my head. So if I'm reading through it and something comes into my head, I'm like, oh, I can fix that. That's what this is. It's just me kind of working it through. So, <clears throat> <sighs> okay, it starts off with a prologue. Life and Death, and that's the story of Clifford. Take care of the boy. Now, to be honest with you, that story is not even how it remotely played. I think I was like eight years old when he died. <laughs> I totally turned it around where I was like an infant, like just newly born. <laughs> He's like holding the baby. He's holding the toddler in the swaddling clothes, I, I said. And he's like, take care of the boy. And he hands me off to my mother, my loving mother. <laughs> Well, there's this picture of him holding me as a as a toddler, and so I kind of mix those two together, and it's, it's I talk about his death, which I don't even remember how he died. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember if he died there at the trailer or if he's at the hospital. I have no idea how he died or when he died. So, I, so that whole story is completely made up. It's about the angel of death coming and taking him away. <laughs> so it's a fucking great story. I love it. Um. I love it because it's completely made up, but it's it totally works. Because again, the whole point was you know pass the child off and be like take care of the boy, and then this whole thing with the Hobbit and they ain't taking care of the boy. They <laughs> they ain't taking care of shit. Okay. <sighs> and then just because I wanted to, I hit the prologue two. It's called prologue two in parentheses because why the hell not? Where did my life go wrong? Part two again with. Part one is at the end of book two. And then it's titled The Day I Fell Into the Septic Tank and Almost Died, which is just a fucking great story. Dude, that fucking story. I love that story. <laughs> just look it up. And I refer it to as like looking up from the ring, like the movie The Ring. And then you see Dale T. Cacklin, the moon. It was like the moonlit sky. Because you gotta understand, I'm in, the, in the, I'm in the fucking trenches here with shit, like everywhere. And all I can see is just a beautiful night sky. Starry night and the moon and there's Dale T looking over bucking out teeth cock and going <laughs> all, the, all the old woman is like Dale pull him up Dale <laughs> the fucking stupid shit that happens to me dude the fact dude the fact that any any take any any story in the book and by the book I mean one two three or no even in four take any of those motherfucking stories and just say, how, you know? It's like, you take a snapshot of your life and look at it and say, this ain't my life. <sighs> so anyways, that's that's the prologue. What? Well, a wandering eye is different from a... What? What'd you say? A wandering eye is different from... Wandering eye. What? Wondering I, whatever. My father and daughter have one too. Whatever. I, I don't care about that. Why are you telling me this stuff when I'm fucking doing a clip? I don't care that your daughter's got. No, dude, he's got this wandering eye. Or whatever it's called. Wandering, woundering, whatever it's fucking called. Where you look at him. I can't remember if it's the right or left. I can't remember because I haven't looked at him directly in the face for about 20 years. No, no kidding. I can't look at this guy in the face. Not that he's weird, you know, bad looking necessarily. I'm not saying he's good looking or anything. He's not good looking. Let's just say that he's not good looking. But he's not like, no, he's weird looking. I was, I was trying to be nice there, but no, he's he's weird looking. I, I mean, I'm nothing to look look at it either. So, you look at him. One of his eyes literally darts off to the left. It's like okay, 
Well, the other one's looking at you straight on, and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" I and you start looking around. And you're like, "What the f- what the fuck's he looking at?" Because it's like, bing, 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 bing. It, <clears throat> whatever. Again, that's all book related for those who may be listening to this. <sighs> okay. So, anyways, what was I talking? About? Oh, so we have the two prologues, life and death, and then we have death on the tank, and then part one, section one, I should say. Love Lies and Family Ties and Unbind. Okay. Um, we have Going Out to Dinner with Dale T, which again is just an opener. We have The Gold Digger's Guide to Getting the Most Out of Life, Learning How to Drain the Lifeblood from an Idiotic Little Man and His Pathetic Family While Still Being Able to Sleep at Night. And that's the story where he talks about getting um, solicited at work by The Hobbit. Which, oh, dude... Just the thought that he pops in at, like, number two on this fucking, <laughs> this table of content. It's like, the whole thing is just about her. Like, everything was about her. It's like, holy Christ. <sighs> and this is, I think this is actually a decent story. The day my father's fornication destroyed us all. I actually like that story. Um, and then we've got the day my father took off and abandoned me. I should say abandoned us. Because Gene was part of it. I don't know if I should say us or me. Or just leave it at me. I don't know if I matter. The day my father took off and abandoned us. Leaving us for dead with only... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's more personalized to me. So, the day my father took off and abandoned me. Leaving me for dead with only a hope and a dream in my heart. And some old baloney in the fridge. <laughs> Which I love that last part. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I love that last part. The whole blowing in the fridge thing. Which is then followed up by... He did it for the cupboards. The glory of Mordor's riches. I've, I, I, I'm going to say it again. I love that fucking title. <laughs> I'm not saying even the story is that good. But just that title. He did it for the cupboards and the glory of Mordor's riches. I fucking love that title. I am... Dude, I am... like I literally want to take my finger and just rim my asshole with it. Because that's how excited I am over that. It's not even that that witty either. No, actually it is. The whole glory of Mordor's riches. Dude. Over the glory of Mordor's riches. And when you put it in the in the in, in context of the Hobbit, she's spending the, the, the money that she got from her divorce and and then you tie it into the War of the Hoses later on. Oh my god. Oh I'll actually talk about that later. Um so far up to this point, I haven't changed anything. And we got deconstruction, reconstruction, living in the house, in the house that hell built. Which I love that last part. Living in the house that hell built because hell built. <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. Um, oh, here's a new one. <laughs> now I love this title too. Disease laden hobbitses, and the filth that they carry with them. Oh, dude, uh, dude, that bitch would get sick because I, I don't know if working in pay, payroll, people just keep coming in, getting a paycheck, and they, they, they launder the fucking diseases and shit. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. That bitch would come home sick as a fucking dog. We're talking, I mean, we had it all. We had, you know, pneumonia, leukemia. We had it all. We had everything. Okay. She was bringing it all home. Probably gonna get herpes and AIDS at the same time. <sighs> no, seriously, she she got me sick within within a year, twice within a year, about a year and a half, give or take. And I talk about both of them. This was the first time, and <laughs> don't even get me started. So yeah, disease laden hobbitses. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that term, hobbits. Is. I, don't that's a, I don't know if that's how you spell it. Hobbits is. I don't know if that's how you spell it, but you'll figure that out. Disease-laden hobbits is and the filth that they carry with. <laughs> uh, and then I finally found the perfect place for the Easter that my father lost his basket and his place at the dinner table, not to mention his place in our hearts and our wills. Um, yeah, that... That one, it was kind of a standalone story, so it kind of, I may have to retweak that one a little bit, because there's certain parts where I kind of 
go over the same information. Not a lot, but there's just maybe like a paragraph or two where it's like, oh, you've already said this repeatedly. Now, there's a couple things I do repeat a lot in here, and I don't know if that's good. Um, like, I've said probably a hundred times, all I want to do is just sit in my room and be left alone. And that wasn't good enough for her. I've repeated that far more than I probably should. Because you gotta, you got to understand, each chapter was kind of its own thing. And you put it together, and it's like, I, I just read that five times in the last two chapters. You know, so that might be something to, to think about as you're going through it. Um, okay, then, let's see, then we got... Dykes and Candy Corn Lights, and then Dumpster Diving Dykes. I I love those two stories. I really do. I love the stories. I love that moment in time, just looking out, and, and just the, the, the whole lesbian poodle grooming thing and the shaving of the dog's anus. <laughs> and again, I will state it. I will state it for a fact. I am, I am going to fight for the word dyke. I am going to fight for dyke, okay? That should be a, a, a slogan and a sign, fight for dyke. Um... <laughs> because I think when you read it, because I was very, um, well, let's say I tried to be, and maybe I'm just an asshole, but I tried to be very open-minded to the whole lesbian poodle grooming thing, where it was like, I wasn't like, oh, those fucking fags, blah, blah, blah. You know, it wasn't anything like that. It was more like, eh, you know. So I think in context, I think it was fine, but I know it's kind of, you know, derogatory and kind of, you know, homophobic. Believe me, this was not homophobic in any way. I know it sounds, like you look at Dykes and Cranicorn, oh my god, it's homophobic, homophobic. No, no, this wasn't homophobic. I mean, at least for me, it wasn't homophobic. Now, okay, that doesn't say much, because, you know, I call people niggers sometimes, you know. Actually, I don't, but, you know, I'm not above not doing that, you know, let's just put it that way. I don't do that kind of stuff. But, you know, hey, push comes to shove. Hey, if, if it meant that I could hurt somebody's feelings, I'd say whatever I had to do. That's all I'm going to say. Like, I mean, I was talking to the Hobbit, and I, she was getting pissy with me, and I, was, I started mentioning her ex-husband, and she completely flipped off the handle. So I, I say things that will hurt people, purposely, just to get them to get away from me. So, I mean, if it takes me saying certain terms, I will do that. You know. It doesn't necessarily mean that I, you know, have this ill will in my heart toward them now. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, you're an idiot, get away from me, and you won't, so therefore I will say what you need to hear to get, a, you know, to get it through your fucking head to get away from me. That's how I feel about racism and homophobia and all that bullshit. So, no, there's, like, there's a gay guy going, hee 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 in my face and be like, hey, faggot, get the fuck out of here, you know. I'm not afraid to do that. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, those two stories are not... Actually, I think they were very pro-fag. They were very pro-fag. I mean, there's no getting around. Now, I'm being sarcastic when I say it that way. But you get my point. So, I don't know. I know you're going to like I said, I know you're going to go liberal on me. And, oh, great, I can't say that. Or progressive and blah, blah, blah. I know you're going to get all that way on me, but it is what it is. And, like I said, I I don't want to lose... I mean, I use the word dykes twice, okay? And in, in the title... Um, I'm trying to think, did I use the word dyke in the actual, um, I did, I think at least once, I said, let me define the term, quote-unquote, dyke, and what it means here, and I explained what it meant in the context of what I was saying, and it was very pro, actually, believe it or not. So, I, again, you're probably going to get uppity with that, but I could deal with dumpster diving, like dumpster diving lesbians, or... You could take you could take the word out there because I have dumpster diving dykes, which is funny. I'm sorry, it is funny. I don't want you, you know, hog tying the humor there. It, that's funny. A, a dumpster diving dyke that is just hysterically funny when you think about it. Is it? Like, no, it's funny. But I'll give you that one. I'll, I I'm not married to that one. I will I will concede that one. If 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 you, I mean, if you're gonna do it once, what the hell? You might as well do it twice. But if you're, if you're like all oh, your, you know your butt, butt cheeks are clenched, you're like, oh my god, dick, you should dick. Er. Okay, fine, you can take that one up. But dykes and candy corn lights, that one I'm going to fight for to the end of days. Okay, I just I'm going to. <laughs> I don't care. <sighs> Anyways, Dale T's handwritten letter to Jean. 
Happy trails, Han. Gene's last day with us. <coughs> Days with us, excuse me. Oh, followed up by Gene's handwritten letter to Dale T. An anal reflection and the shit to come. And that ends part one. Now we have part two. Dissension in the ranks and more bullshit in the making. I like that title, actually. Dissension in the ranks and more bullshit in the making. That's actually fucking good. I'm very proud of myself. Now, this <laughs> this part two got really fucked up. Um, yeah, the first story is not the first story that I wanted it to be. I actually wanted the two, two candy corn stories to be first. Because, like I said, I wanted... Because I, I lambaste Jean. Because she... She, knew she was writing on the walls with crayons. She had, she had, she was just being a complete bitch when she was asked to move. Like she went blah, 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 off the fucking deep end, and she completely, um, she left that apartment a wreck. And not just like basic wear and tear of somebody living there. Like if somebody came up here and saw the apartment, yeah, there's holes in the wall. Not by choice. Well, I did throw my that one iPad. So there's like this hole in the wall. And then the dog started chewing a little bit at the at the plaster. There's that kind of stuff that just happens naturally. Although I did throw it, but whatever. But like she went out of her way to like kick stuff and break stuff. And just she went out of her way to be a bitch. Um, and it was kind of dis- it was kind of disturbing too. Um, I, I'm not I'm not impressed with how she handled herself. <sighs> Anyways. So, like I said, after lambasting her, I wanted a happier story about the lesbian poodle groomers and the whole cabal and the back alley deals that they do and all that shit. So I wanted that, but I actually like where it is because I like it the way it is. Although, I mean, maybe when you're reading through it, you're like, okay, this would be better somewhere else. Whatever, I don't know, I don't care. <sighs> Anyways, we have part two. Let's see, dissension in the ranks, more bullshit, blah, 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 more bullshit in the making. Uh, first chapter of that is Committee of Three, no four, wait, it's five. I love that title, I don't care. The Committee of Three, no four, wait, it's five. That, dude, that is fucking, that is classic. You can't deny that. It's simple but classic. The Committee of Three, no four, wait, it's five. Dude, I'm a fucking genius. I am a fucking genius. That's the title of the chapter. Fuck you. I should do that. Fuck you, I'm, the, I'm a genius. That should be the chapter. Should be the chapter. <sighs> Anyways, uh, that's followed up by the day Jean flips out, goes ballistic, and loses her mind, and her poodle figurines. Then we have the un- uninvited... Now, this story, I don't... <sighs> this story I had to rework, and then I changed the title. And I don't like the title. I don't like the title, but it was a setup for part two, and I just simply called it the setup story. So I mean, you could fix that. You could put whatever you want in there. So you have the uninvited, the setup story, which again, that just sounds stupid. But you can, I'm still debating what I'm going to do with that. It's kind of a placeholder. Uh, the uninvited, although I can, maybe I can just do uninvited. I don't know. Maybe it's just uninvited and uninvited too. Whatever. I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. That one is still in the in the working phases. The the story itself is done, but the title. <sighs> do, 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 do. Anyways, then we have the War of the Hoses. Camden White Trash battling it out for supremacy. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, that story. That story is a. a conglomeration of multiple stories and <laughs> um I don't know I don't it's it's partly a recap story I mean there's a lot of recap stories in here that I think that's the problem where I kept saying I, I said the same things over and over I kept recapping a lot and it's like I don't know I don't know how that plays out so some of that, again, as you're going through it, you may have to, like, tone down or delete, which I don't want to delete too much, but... <sighs> whatever. Um, the War of the Hoses is, is, is... I like what I did with it. Now, I don't know if it turned out well. I, again, I don't know that. Um, I will be reading through it again 
um, at 30% right now. Probably not right now because, uh, but whatever. Um, essentially what happened with that is I went back through and I found, um, I found a bunch of emails from The Hobbit, which I sent to you. So what I did is I transcribed them, which was stupid, which I, all I had to do was just basically cut and paste, and I didn't realize it at the time. Oh, so I transcribed, I'd go from the email to the freaking writing program, write a couple words, go back, write a couple more words, and finally after about like the third page of that shit, I was like, oh, you know what, I could just actually go and cut, paste the fucking thing. Because what I did is I took photos of it, just so I could read it in case I wanted to transcribe it. And then I realized, well, it's in my email. And since my email was still open, I was like, oh, I could just cut and paste. Like, duh, you know. <sighs> Whatever. So what I did, and I set up this, I did this whole setup where I was explaining what this was. So, for example, you're, there's going to be, um, like in quotes, you're going to have parts of the email. And then I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell a little bit of the story. And have like a quote from the email, tell a little bit more of the story, another quote, so on and so forth. And the whole the whole thing breaks up like that. So it's like one, then the other, then the other, then the other. And I kind of like how it played out, actually. Um, I, actually, I kind of like it. What I did is I italicized and bolded, bolded, bold, bold typed, whatever, the uh, email. So it stood out a little bit. So you had kind of like the the darker version, the bolder version, and then the normal version, and it kind of, like, stood out, like I said. And I, I like the way it looked, actually. I, you may not like it, I don't know, but... Whatever. Um, but yeah, the War of the Hoses. <laughs> he, had, I swear to God, Dale T actually told, he actually told the ex-husband that if he called again, I'll kick your fucking ass. <laughs> You call here again, I'll kick your fucking ass, Dale T says. <laughs> of course, the Hobbit was like, she's all in her glory that he's white knighting for her. And I was like, oh my god, you fucking scumbags, you fucking scumbag. Like, Dale T's a scumbag. I mean, let's just be honest, Dale T Collective is a scumbag. And then he hooks up with the Skinners, and he it's like he just goes completely... I don't even know... Like, just, just, like, microscopic. He just goes, like, 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 snail. It's like, I, he's like a slug. He, he's, like, he de, he de-evolved by hooking up with them. It's just weird. He became, like, a slug, slug man. And I, I don't know what to tell you. So the idea he was white knighting for her. <laughs> you call here again, I'll kick your fucking ass. <laughs> he said it with such conviction. <laughs> Oh my god. Like, Dale T ain't, ain't, ain't kick nothing, okay? Dale T couldn't even kick a hoagie's ass, okay? He couldn't even kick a sandwich ass, okay? He couldn't even kick a can of beans ass. I'm not saying, I don't know, maybe he could be in a fight, I don't know. I suppose he could hit pretty hard, you know? Whatever. I don't know. He's not confrontational, though, let's put it that way. Whether he could take a punch, I don't know. I, I couldn't take a punch. Dude, I'd be balling like a fucking little bitch, but. I don't know, maybe Dale T could take a punch. I don't know. But he's like, again, he's like, you call your again, I'll kick your fucking ass. <laughs> and I intermingled that with their hose because there was a story of the War of the Hoses and I never wrote it. And I don't know what it is. I do not know what that story was at all. I have absolutely no fucking clue what that story was about. So I kind of made up a story. <laughs> well, I basically made it up with the husband. The ex-husband was calling there looking for stuff that she had taken during the divorce, one of which was the hose. Just because, why not? Because the War of the Hoses sounds funny. It's like War of the Roses, except it's with a fucking hose. <laughs> so I, I kind of just took those two and married them together. And so instead of saying... You, you ever call here again, I'll kick your fucking ass. He's like, you ever call here again looking for that hose, I'll kick your fucking ass. It's my hose now. And I went, <laughs> you get your own hose. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> so, I'm actually very proud of myself with that. 
I'm very proud of myself. And I don't have a lot to be proud of, but that story specifically I'm very proud of. Um, now, again, I'm not saying it's a good story. I'm not saying it's a well-written story or even a cohesive story, or even a story worth keeping. But I'm proud of the fact that I... Because as I was reading through one of the chapters, I mentioned the War of the Ro the War of the Hoses, and I was like, I will talk about this later. Well, I never did, and I never wrote about it. And like I said, I completely... I had no idea what the story was about anymore. It's been, what, 10 years? 11 years? 11 years now. <laughs> it's all, Actually, shit, it's almost... Shit, Nick. Well, next August, it'll be 12 years, so... So, yeah, we're basically a little over 11 years here. I don't remember what the War of the Hoses was. I remember the War of the Hoses, the idea, but I don't remember what it was about. Obviously, I'm assuming a hose. Um, actually, I think it had something to do with them moving here and getting a hose. Or something to do with the hose in the pool. Oh, man, no, no, no. I think it was he ran over the hose with the fucking... Um, lawnmower. I think that's what that was. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? It's done now. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I'll probably never read that story again in a day of my life. Uh, do 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 do. Okay. <sighs> so we have the uninvited is two, kind of like Metallica's Unforgiven two, only with a point. Uh, then we have The Hobbit Cries Foul, Can't We All Just Get Along, which is, again, I fucking can't believe I wrote the same chapter twice. Because, again, I had this, uh, I had I had some shit written from, like, a, I think a uh, instant message, shit that I had sent you years ago, and I had just saved it and, you know, put it on the thing, so it's like, you know, my name, blah, 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 your name, blah, 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 you know. And so what I did is I went through that and made a story out of it. Well, I ended up doing this. I ended up doing it twice over the last couple years. Like I did it way before, and then I just did it just recently, not even realizing it. I can't believe I didn't realize it. <sighs> so when I was reading through it, I'm like, "This sounds very fucking familiar. Why am I doing this one again?" And I realized, "Holy shit." They're the exact same fucking story. So I just took the slight differences and turned it into one big story. Which sucked, because then I lost the story. But I added a couple more since then. Oh, uh, do-do-do-do-do. Another story that I actually kind of like is Deathbed Confessions, The Week I Had Pneumonia and Nobody Cared. Which is the follow-up to The Hobbitses and the filth that they carry. Um, which is the, obviously sick story, me being sick, or bringing the fucking sickness to the house. Uh, whatever. Then we have the day my father, the, the day I, blah, 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 let me start over. The day I realized that my father loves the homeless guy more than me. Oh, dude, that irritated me, reading through that again. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big motherfucker, I like to eat. So, the f oh, oh, and I even added the whole boiling steak thing, because that's where the boiling steak shit comes in. They went out and got some food. They went out to the store and bought some shit. And she was so disillusioned with me at that time. Bitch didn't even cook me any dinner. She didn't cook me dinner at all. She cooked three steaks. One for her, one for Dale T, and one for the fucking homeless guy. Dale T runs off... I, I was in my... I was sitting at the computer at the time. And I remember hearing Dale T run through the hallway. I can't hear him. He's like, he yells up. I can hear him through the door. He's like, and then he runs upstairs, knocks, you hear him knocking, you hear him like, knocking on shit. And I, I hear him, he's like, nah, nah. and I was like, I knew what he was saying. And I was waiting for him to come tell me, and hey, dinner's ready. And I didn't really want to go out there anyway, so I was not no hurry to run out there. Well, he, he comes down, they sit at the table, they have dinner. And and I'm I'm literally on the other side of the door. Hey, nobody call me. And I'm like, just as well, cause I don't want to eat dinner with her, cause she's being a bitch. And I would just, you know, I'd rather eat the shit. I'd rather go out there later after she's done dishes and settled down. Go out there, and make a plate, and come back. Well, apparently they were gonna take off after dinner for whatever reason. They had somewhere to go, whatever. 
and she's already left. She's in, she's in, sitting in the car, and Dale T's sitting in the he's, he's in the kitchen on his way out the door. And I come out, and I'm like, "Hey, what's for dinner?" And he's like, "Well, ain't nothing for dinner. We ain't cooking nothing." And I'm like, "What the fuck, Dale T? We don't want her from steaks in the in the freezer." I'm like, Dale T, it's the middle of goddamn winter. Like, there's actually a snowstorm coming. Like, there's snow falling. And there's, like, ten feet of snow out there. I'm like, Dale T, how am I supposed to grill these fucking things? And he thinks for a minute, and he's like, well, you could uh, put them in a frying pan and or some water. <laughs> now, the whole backstory with that is that she would get uppity if I leave a dish out there. Her son could come in with, like, 15 dishes, yet if I come out with, like, one... Add my one to his 15, I'm a son of a bitch. She would actually take my dish, leave it on the side, do up all the other dishes, and then leave mine sit in the sink, and then bitch to Dale T that I need to come out and do my own dish. That's how fucking petty and pathetic she was. And the whole keep the kitchen clean bullshit and whatnot. So it's like, I don't want to take a tin and put it on a tin and bake it. I don't want to fry it. Fry in the steak. Because again, it's middle of fucking winter. What are you going to do? So I was like, okay, I guess there's a big frying pan sitting there in the in the drainer from well, whatever they were doing before. So I was like, put it on, turn the stove on, add a little water, and the thing blah, 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 bubbling and shit. And I'm like, I guess, because I know you gave me shit for boiling the fucking steak, and that was not my intention. I was they they strong armed me, they handcuffed me. I had no options. I had no options, none. I refused to take accountability for that because it was not my fault so anyways I, I did add that later on um, yeah the day I realized that my father loves the homeless guy more than me he went and told the fucking homeless guy and that bitch actually cooked him a goddamn steak she didn't cook me one like I have expected to go out there you know there's some potatoes in the, in the thing in a bowl with some cover over top of it and I expect to see a plate with a steak on it like oh your steak's in the fridge you know, you know enjoy it no, bitch, the bitch didn't even cook me one. That's how fucking, oh, it irritates me to that. Mm. You can understand, she did not leave food in the house. She didn't. Now, yeah, if I wanted to cook a 10-course meal for dinner, like, oh, here's a steak and some potatoes and some blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if I want to eat that, if I want to make a fucking 10-course meal for myself, yeah, there was food. But if I'm looking just for myself, like just to grab a can of soup or just, uh, you know, a hot pocket or something, there was none of that stuff. There was maybe a packet of rice, occasional can of soup, and the occasional turkey that she'd use for her lunch. And if I ate the turkey, she'd get all pissed. I'm not going to keep mine. I'm sitting there all day with nothing. This went on for months. So it was like, it was just one of those things. It's like, you know, he's fat, so let's not let's not feed him kind of a deal. That's what it came down to. And then if, and if I said, well, there's no food now. I mean, yeah, Dale T, there's a goddamn fucking frozen turkey in there. Oh, yeah, there's food. What am I going to do? Well, seriously, Dale T, what am I going to do? Take a fucking turkey from the oven, or from the refrigerator, and stick it in the oven just for myself. A full-fledged fucking Thanksgiving turkey. Are you kidding me, Dale T? I think, and I think one time they had, um, they didn't have hamburg patties, which was good. But I ate, dude, all I ate for about six months was hamburg patties, rice packets, and that Campbell's soup. Now, again, I don't want to sit there and say there wasn't, there was no food. I don't want to insinuate that, but when I say there's no food, it was, you know, no food. <laughs> okay, it wasn't shit that you could just go out and make. You know, even if it was like a little package of chicken or something, okay, fine. I'll eat a couple, two pieces of chicken, whatever, or some chicken tenders or something. That would have been fine. Go and microwave them or stick them in the oven, whatever. Just do up the dishes when you're done. Fine. That would have been absolutely fine. But again, unless I wanted to do a ten course meal, which is just absurd, especially, you know, on a Tuesday. <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. She was fucked in the head. Oh, the day I realized my father loves a homeless guy more than me. Okay, and that's followed up by the day I went out and found a half-naked homeless man standing in my kitchen with his arm elbow deep in a jar of pickles talking about, hey, as if it's some sort of greeting. I, and again, I love the, the run on there. Oh, then we have what Hobbits in Vegas didn't stay in Vegas. I like that story, too, because it kind of... It actually goes very well with the... 
a half naked homeless man standing there talking with a greeting, saying hi. Um, it goes right where that one ends. Actually, all these where they go like boom, 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 like right, you know, bloop. like I couldn't. If I came up with another chapter, I couldn't just shoehorn it in because it would fuck everything up. It'd fuck the flow up. Everything goes from one to the other, one to the next one. Um, whatever. So anyways, I, uh, yeah, what Hobbits in Vegas didn't stay in Vegas. And then we have, and this is a new one that I added. I'm very proud of this one, actually, because, again, it was something that I sent to you in a, uh, uh, what do you call those? Instant message. And I, I basically made a really lengthy story out of it. I don't know if it's a great story necessarily. No, actually, it was pretty good. I kind of enjoyed reading through it myself. Um, oh, let's see, what did I title it? Um, a collection of heartwarming, pointless stories simply to fill space. <laughs> story number one. And this is like a sub chap, the sub, uh, yeah, subchapter. Story number one. Leaving all my shit behind when I die. Which then kind of harkens back to the, uh, the Hobbit on my mother's computer and deleting her stuff and trying to erase her and shit like that. And then story number two. J.C. Penny Jewelry. Although maybe I could tweak the J.C. Penny Jewelry thing. Although story number one, story number two, and story number three is kind of boring too. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. And then story number three is the green... The lean, the green licorice shits, where I talked about getting the shit, and it's talking about green poop from eating the licorice, the Twizzlers, <laughs> which has nothing to do with anything, it just, uh, it was there, and I, I wanted to include it, again, simply to fill space, <laughs> um, but it's not like, it's not even, I think it's maybe like pff, a couple paragraphs, it's not even that long, um, so, <sighs> whatever. Anyways, oh, this next one. I just read through this because I was reading through everything again. Um, Hobbits Love Lies and Dirty Deeds. That's a new one I just added. And I really like that one. Really like that one. That one, I think, turned out fairly good. Again, there's a little bit of recap, so it's kind of it's got that issue. But as a standalone story, I think it's pretty good. And that's the one talking about Mar Martha Skintard. And that, that, oh, dude, don't get me started with that shit. Don't even get me started again with that. I, you know, I, I need to repent to God for having such anger toward these people. Dude, I've, I fucking belittled the Skinner family. I, <laughs> I completely, oh my God, I said some horrible things to them. I said some blatantly horrible things to these people. About these people. Like, directly. Like, Marja and Nene, I mentioned Nene. She was mentioned, um... Now, I don't know how you feel about that, especially, like, the whole slut-shaming thing. Um, I tried to avoid that. It's like, I needed to tell the story without actually being, oh, it was her fault, you know, it was, no. She was, you know, somebody did something to her and it was her fault. It was, I was avoiding that. Um, although part of it was her fault, actually. Um, no, this was, I, I can, I can attest to some of the shit that went on, and, um, let's go let you know a little secret. She put herself in a very bad place with a very bad individual, and if anybody did anything to her, it was that fucking B-Craft cocksucker. Okay. I, I know for, dude, that guy, that guy was like oozing herpes. Like, you, like, his whole side of his face was just, like, I mean, that guy was just herpy magnet, and AIDS were, like, just dripping off of him. I mean, you could, you look at him, and you're, like, you just, you don't even want to, you want to, like, yeah, you want to put gloves on, okay? And he def he, he molested his sister, I can tell you that right off the bat, and she was dating him, and it was right around that time when all these allegations started popping up. Whatever. Whatever. Anyways, I got really pissed off because, you know, it is what it is. And then I started, you know, listen, listen, I don't give a fuck what actually happened in this sense. I mean, I care to a point, but obviously not 
for the point of the story, I don't care. Because the point of the story is Marsha should shut her fucking mouth. That's simple. And then the Hobbit should have shut her fucking mouth. She had no business telling my Aunt Linda a damn thing about any of it. Why she was doing that... Well, it was obvious why she was doing it. Because she was trying to get... That, she was trying to get individuals against me because... Cousin Renee had taken my side. Jean and Graham were on my side, obviously. And then she was trying to get... And, of course, my Aunt Wilma, she was neutral. You know... But she's she trying to get my Alinda against me and on her side. So it was just like everybody was taking sides. And it was like, oh, well, his best friend did this. And then, you know, he came out and, and, and you know, to visit him. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden he started disrespecting me and blah, blah, blah. And it was, it was like, fuck you, bitch. I just disrespect your shit a long time before that happened. <sighs> Whatever, man. The woman's got some legit fucking mental issues. Legit fucking mental. And I'm telling you right now, because there was a part when I was talking about Gene where the mailman said, oh, I am so glad that bitch left. The mailman's not just going to say, the guy at the post office. Like, where does it, how does that come up? Like, the mailman's just not going to look at Dale T and say, oh, yeah, I'm so glad that bitch finally moved. He's not going to do that, or she's not going to do whoever it was. So I'm actually starting to think, especially with this story, I'm actually starting to think that the Hobbit was going around to different people, like the mailman, and, and, and talking shit about Jean. Now, Jean had her own fucking issues, and she was a bitch. And the idea that the, the male person, whatever, was like, yeah, I'm glad that bitch is finally gone. I, I actually can believe that, because I was saying the same thing, because she was being a fucking crazy bitch. <laughs> so, you know... Because she did flip her shit. She honestly did flip her shit when she was asked to move. Like, she went off the fucking deep end. Like, I honestly told Graham, and I said this to her over the phone, I said, I think we need to get Jean some mental fucking help. Because she, she was not looking good, first off. When I saw her at that Christmas, that Christmas that year. And, like, she was completely bonkers. I think she had an honest nervous breakdown. I'm not joking when I say that. Now, The Hobbit is just fucking insane. She's self-centered and she's insane. Now, I'm not saying I'm not self-centered and have insane issues myself, but I'm not going to sit there and move into somebody's house and be like, oh yeah, you know, you're a son of a bitch. Yeah, I told you I was a son of a bitch. What, what news flash are you just now receiving? I told you in email... That it wasn't going to work out and that I wanted to avoid any problems because it just is what it is. <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be happy when this when this whole this book three is over because I'm really tired. Because for a long time I had buried a lot of the stuff and it was like I really wasn't thinking of The Hobbit. It was like, oh, because you know, they, were, they were giving me $100 bills for Christmas. And it's like, because if they read this, that's over, you know. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing they really ever do for me, kind of a deal. And it's like, pfft. so it's like, do I really want to risk? See, that's the problem. It's like, oh, now we're kind of over. Well, I have not been over it. I am not even remotely close to over it. I just stopped. Basically, I put the war on hold. The war has not ended. This book is definitely part of that. I admit, it is probably the most ungodly thing I'm going to say about anything that I've ever written. <laughs> this book, I don't give a fuck it even ever gets published. The simple fact that I wrote it down, and by the way, I do want to send it to you just on the off fucking chance that I die and Dale T shows up and he goes poking through my stuff and he finds it and I go, oh, delete that. I'm going to bet you I'm going to delete that. So I definitely want to make sure you get a copy of this shit sooner than later. I don't foresee that happening, but I don't want to take any fucking chances. Because, you know, I'm dead. I can't do anything. Which is bullshit. Don't even get me started. <sighs> Anyways. Yeah, see, again, it riles up all this fucking anger and hatred that I have for these people. You know? Because I actually kind of put it to the side, and it was like, eh, you know, whatever. Whatever. But I will say, score one for the old woman. Which is weird, because 
the old woman took out a fourth mortgage on her house. Maybe it was even a fifth. I don't remember. She she took dude. She took so many mortgages and, and refinanced and all this other bullshit. Cause it's the only time we ever had money. <laughs> like oh here's eighty thousand dollars. Like eh, we got to pay you know ninety thousand dollars for the bills. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because between the car payment, the electric payment, because she, she did not pay. The, if she didn't have the full payment, she didn't pay anything. There are times they actually shut our power off. And I'm like, uh, whatever. <coughs> Which was part of the problem, because DLT couldn't afford the house, even with Jean up there paying a little bit of piddly rent that she was paying, whatever it was. And... He couldn't afford the house, so she, so him finding this this woman who supposedly has all this money now, it was a net positive, so to speak. Well, she got wind of the house, she wanted the house, and then she fucking ruined everybody's lives. You know, she ruined everybody basically. I mean, honestly, God, she killed the dog, she killed Ollie, she evicted Jean, she evicted me, and then she put she basically for I don't know if he's still on. But he was he was on antidepressant medication, and then talking about I want to commit I want to kill myself. He said that twice to me, like directly to me that I that he wanted to kill himself. After meeting her for over a year, about a year and a half, he's 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 now depressed and wants to kill himself. After disowning half his fucking family, you know the people who put all the money into the fucking house. Oh. <sighs> whatever so it's like like I said I'm going to be happy when this uh, when when I'm done with this I'm going to be I am done with this okay it's that simple when I'm done I'm done that's it no the problem is I will have to th- talk about them a little bit at the beginning of book 4 because I need right now I need to get into book 4 where it's talking about Graham and her insanities because um, Graham was was insane to because I'm part of me is starting to think maybe I'm the one who's insane. Because my mother was partly insane. Del T is completely insane. The Hobbit's insane. Gene's insane. Everybody around me is insane. Yet I, for some reason, have this idea that I'm not the one insane. Maybe I'm the one who's completely insane and all these other people are just, you know, living the dream. I don't know anymore. At this... <laughs> I mean, seriously. I don't have a clue. Well, like I said, Jean did flip her fucking wig. Betsy was always nuts. She was always crazy. Hobbit was always crazy. Oh, another thing. I definitely was trying to um, not use real names in this one, obviously, because she would probably contact a lawyer if she could. Um, <laughs> she, she called the cops on me once, you know, so if like, she ever did find out about this. Um... <laughs> That's why I just call her the Hobbit throughout the whole thing. She, that's her. And see, the problem is, I don't want to hate her. I really don't want to hate her. I completely hate what she did. I mean, I honestly wish we could have, ma- could have, you know, lived and let lived. I really do. But she didn't want to do that. And I generally feel, at the end of the day, like I could stand before God and say, I literally tried. Now, I'm an asshole and I fucked it up, but I did try not to fuck it up. This is one time in my life I actually went out of my way to not do anything stupid. Which should, you know, I should be given a fucking medal for that or something. The universe should thank me for that. Because I didn't have to do that. I did it for Dale T. And it was just like, okay, fine. Like, you know, I don't know, man. Anyways, oh, that's the end of part one. Do, 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 do. I did slightly change, um, uh, finished for, um, I did slightly change part three, and that's entitled, When Christ Looked Down from the Cross and Said, It is Finished, He Wasn't Kidding. It was finished for us all, in fact. Um, I added that little last part there at the end. I think I think it sounds a little better. 
Because, again, the whole point was, you know, again, Christ says it is finished, and then he dies. And this is when they throw me out, which then conveniently goes right into Dale T's little fucking Inferno, which is the whole Dante Inferno thing. So I like the way, I, I like the symbolism there, um, which is my next story that I need to read. And then I got to go back through the entire fucking thing one more time. And then I'll be done. But whatever. Then we got Dale T, little oink fucker of a man. Cousin Renee's handwritten letter to Uncle Dale. It should be Uncle Dale. Not Uncle Dale T. Uncle Dale T. It should be Uncle Dale. Yeah, no, I want Uncle Dale. I'm going to take out the T. To Uncle Dale. Uncle Dale. Hey, Dale. I'm Uncle Dale. Fucking idiot. <sighs> then we got Grandma's upset and she ain't having it no more. That's when she disowned Dale T completely. And then ultimately it disowned me because, again... I needed a freaking chair. She wouldn't buy me a damn chair because she thought Dale T should pay for the chair. You know? It's like she gives she gives cousins thousands of dollars to buy new trucks and shit, but she couldn't get me like a $300 chair, you know? All because Dale T's an asshole and he should be the one to pay for it. Well, again, he had no fucking money, Graham. <laughs> it's like, you're trying to hurt him, but you end up hurting me at the end of the day. And it was like, I know that wasn't her intent. And she even said, I'm not trying to hurt you, but your father should be paying for that. And I'm like, yeah, but Graham, what's he going to pay for it with? I need the chair. It's not a matter of, you know, principle here. <sighs> Whatever. Um, then we got Dale TV, like primetime, only dumber. <laughs> I like that. I don't remember what that's even about, so I'm going to have to read through that again. Uh, it's weird, I just did it, too. Uh, it'll refresh when I see it, but... And we have Terms of Departure, which actually really isn't a chapter. It's just a, uh, a written thing that I wanted them to sign that they would do before I left. And, and things that I wanted before I left. Which I didn't... I wasn't being greedy. I basically didn't want them to dump me in the middle of nowhere. I thought that was, you know, a must. I wanted my water filter, I wanted my movies, and I wanted to take Lucy, essentially. What well, is basically my only demands. Whatever. <sighs> so yeah, we got the terms of departure. Then we... I like this story, too. Jean's, Jean's little 4th of July fuck party in September. I like, I like that story. <sighs> Which is then followed up by The Peering Eye of Sauron, The Veil of Depression Overtakes the Shire... That's where I talk about Dale T getting depressed and her shrink fucking throwing me out of the... Her shrink is telling telling them that, well, you, you know, you should throw him out of the house and blah, blah, blah. Now, again, that bitch never met with me one time. Yeah, she's making decrees against my existence and never met me once. I mean, if she had said, yeah, I'd like to meet with you just to get, you know, what's on, you know try to understand what's going on here. No, it's like, oh, well, he's, he's 20, whatever, kick him out of the house. That's what it came down to, which, under the circumstances, did not apply, but she did not even take that into consideration. I should sue the bitch, but whatever. <sighs> then we got uh, Piss Bottle, Relieving Thyself. That's where I went to the doctor, and she went, and the Hobbit went through my computer and my stuff and read my emails, and she went through my closet. She went through my, she literally went through my stuff. She rifled through books and shit. Fucking... <sighs> I honestly felt violated. I, I swear to God, I felt violated by her. It was right around that time that when she went to work, I went on on the old woman's computer, got into her email, and I sent over some, uh, I sent over the emails that I sent, well, I, I took pictures and sent to you. Um, I'm so glad I did that. Because I was not, I, there was one thing I definitely was going to do. I was going to respect her privacy. She says I didn't respect her. I never did anything like that until she did it to me. And then I was like, fuck you, bitch. And I went on the computer and I forwarded some emails that she sent to her ex-husband over to myself, which is why I have them today and why they're in the book, which I'm really glad I did, by the way. <sighs> But I was proud of myself. I, I was, because I was purposely, like, I was not going to do that. I wasn't going to fuck with her stuff. Just going to let her be. Just, just, bloop, let her be. No, nope. then she came in. I was at a fucking doctor's visit. Do you understand that? Fucking cripple at a fucking doctor's visit. And she's ransacking my room with sh looking for shit. And they got on my computer, which I had all the stuff open, by the way, because I just, you know. <sighs> 
who would have thought, sure, come on in, you know. I'm out for a couple hours. I just kind of shut the thing down, close, close the, uh, close the lid of the lap, of the laptop, and just like, hey, you know. And she pops it up and starts reading through the stuff. I was like, you know what? Fuck that bitch. Uh, then we have leaving the shire for brandy wine. The journey begins, and that's me packing up shit. Uh, going to the movies. Hobbits on parade. She said I pissed in her shoes, which is a great fucking. Great. Not really a long story at all, but whatever. Uh, then we have making it safely to Brandywine to meet Graham Dolph, which I absolutely love that. The Fellowship must now decide what to do going forward. And then we have the epilogue, which is Graham and the Big Whaler, a trip to BK, which is kind of a hint to Book 4, and then Book 4 is going to open up with them calling the cops on me. So, it's going to, like, each book is going to go right into the next. <sighs> so, yeah, I added, like I said, I added a couple new chapters. Um, I had, like, four or five new chapters. Which I'm very proud of, by the way. What are we at right now? Now, keep in mind, I still have a lot to do. I still got all part three to do. And as of right now, I have... Because I keep adding stuff. The weird thing about this, and like I know game developers say this kind of stuff. It's like every time they go back, they go to a game, and it's like there comes a point when you just have to like pull away from it and say, okay, it's finished. It's like every time I I read one of these stories, it's like, oh, blah, blah, add another word in there. Like instead of you know we went to the store, it was like we went, you know slowly to the store, you know, just weird little nuances that I just keep adding in there, or entire chat, or entire uh, sections, entire paragraphs, entire sentences, I mean, it's just, it's really weird, it's like, every time I read it, I add something new to it, um, ooh, ooh, I have 131 fucking pages, whoo, that doesn't include, um, Again, that doesn't include table contents, and that does not include um, moving everything down. Because I want 150 pages here. So whatever that is, whatever that translates into when you put it into book form, which should, I'm assuming, be more pages, um, I was shooting for about 150. I was hoping between 150 and 185-ish. Closer to 2, but we're not going to get there. Um, then I kind of changed my... Uh, expectations, it's like, you know, I want 130 to 150, well, I've made 131, and again, that doesn't include the two pages for, um, table contents, so there's, what, 133 pages, oh, probably by time I'm done, again, I still got all part three to do, where I keep just adding little nuances and little things, and, um, whatever, so I might even be close to 45, 145, 140, 145. I wouldn't be surprised. I am currently, right now, 70,505 words. That's not... Dude, I just added... Since the last time I told you the update was a couple hours ago. I had... What is it? 69? So I added almost a 1,000 plus words in the last two hours. It's fucking insane, dude. <laughs> and that's just going through it and just... Again, adding little nuances, little tweaks, and, uh, you know. <sighs> I don't know. Um, maybe that's why I added a period at the end of that sentence. What the fuck? I just found a fucking... That was weird. <laughs> I'm just, just randomly going through this, and I'm like, oh, there's no period right there. What the fuck? Uh, anyways. Um... Do, 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 do. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Probably. Um, I am going to look for... Oh, and that also doesn't include... Um, quotes. Um, so, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, you add the fucking quotes, and then you add in table contents. I, we're at 150 pages. No question. No fucking question. Um, no, that's assuming... That's assuming you don't gut entire sections. Like, can't say dyke. The whole fucking chapter goes. 
you know, I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously, hope that doesn't happen, but, yeah, like, there's, right there should be a whole fucking extra page right there, it's worth a shit. <sighs> um, I got a handful of quotes in here, I think I like, no, actually I got like one chapter that has quotes. Um, but do 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 I mean, what the fuck are they, where the fuck are those quotes? Um, oh, it's What Hobbits in Vegas Stays in Vegas. I quoted Sam Kennison on both of them. <laughs> he says, um, I don't worry about terrorism. I was married for two years. Sam Kennison, that's a quote for them getting married in Vegas. And then the second one is, if I get, if I get married again, I want a guy there with a drum to do rim shots during the vows. You know. <laughs> so... Whatever. Um, that's really the only one that I have quotes for. Uh, like, I don't know what I'm going to quote that. Um, I think I'll quote Shakespeare on that one. The day I went off on a half-naked homeless man standing in the kitchen with his arm elbow deep in a jar of pickles talking about hay as if it's some sort of greeting. I don't have to quote Shakespeare somewhere. I don't know what. <laughs> Just... <laughs> But I want, like, outlandish quotes. I want quotes that are, like, meaningful. Like, I want to quote, you know, people that are important, you know. Uh, so I may I may actually, before I hand this off, I may throw some quotes in here. Because I didn't add a lot of quotes to book two. I should have done that. I absolutely should have done more of that. And I didn't. Um... But yeah, I'm definitely hoping to try to get the quotes in here too, or at least some of them, most of them, because um, I don't want to leave that blank. Because I basically I, I want a kind of a say in it. Like right now, I left book two wide open, so you could put like anything in there. Had to leave him. Okay, that's weird little misspelling. When ever I just happen to find that randomly too. Thank you. Um boy. Not not boding too well for my uh, editing skills here. And don't even get me started with a punctuation. I am not a punctuationer. <laughs> I mean it was to the point where it was like I didn't add any commas at all, now it's like I'm adding commas every every third word, it's like now, comma, unlike, comma Dante's Inferno, comma our story doesn't have, comma, it's like oh my god, I gotta be careful with that shit too <sighs> which obviously reading it that way makes no fucking sense, it's like, now, pause unlike Dante's Inferno, pause our story doesn't our story doesn't have much of a heartwarming happy ending, which was funny, cause Dante's Inferno was about going to hell <sighs> Whatever. You get my point. Uh, let's see. I'm rubbing my fucking eye and it's stinging me. Something fierce here. Ah. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah. My fucking eye. It's like all of a sudden I got like, I don't know, sweat from my hand or something. Stinging me. Holy shit. Ah. Anyways. Uh. Oh, I got 9% battery life left. Um. So, tomorrow is Thanksgiving Eve. We have to watch uh, Plane Trains Automobiles. Um, am I still recording? Yes, I am. Okay, then double check. Because I did a fucking clip the other day, and it did not record. And I was just a little bit pissed with that. Whatever. Um, yeah, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Oh, shit! Basically what happened was, toward the end of the month, and I don't have time to talk about this, but toward the end, well, not actually toward the end of the month, because we're still in kind of the middle of the month, but whatever. I ended up buying all the food for the month, and I I had like 12 bucks left, but I didn't feel I had enough for a turkey. And then I completely forgot the fucking Cool Whip. Because I was playing, because the pies are usually four something, almost five. So I'm figuring about ten bucks. I was figuring about twelve bucks because I was figuring two pies. It's ten bucks, and about two something for the Cool Whip. 
Well, I get in there, and I look, and it's like, they're on sale. Well, I knew they were going to be on sale, because they're always on sale right before Thanksgiving. And I was like, well, shit, I could get three pies for the same price as the ten that I was going to buy. So I was like, hoo hoo, I got all excited. Threw ten, or, th- yeah, ten. Threw three pies into my fucking, uh, cart for about three bucks. For, excuse me, for about ten bucks. And as I did, and I was so excited, I completely forgot to then open the door again and get the fucking Cool Whip, which was right there. I mean, it was literally right there. Well, anyways, so I get this. I'm, I'm sitting here working on a book earlier today, actually about 12 hours ago. All of a sudden I hear, bing, bong, bing, bong, the fucking doorbell rings. I'm like, oh, god damn. I, I just, I hate, I hate the sound. I hate that bing bong. Ee, ee. Oh, it irritates me. <sighs> Anyways, I get up and go, and I'm praying it's not Cousin Mary who wants to come in and look at something, or the handyman downstairs who wants to come and look at something, who, yeah, they moved downstairs, by the way, thankfully. Thanks, whatever. <sighs> I was just hoping it wasn't somebody, oh, let's come in because we want to do something. No, because it's Thanksgiving, I had actually kind of clean. Now, I'm not, like, super clean, but the floor was relatively clean because of dog peeing and stuff, occasional pooping and all that stuff. That was, we were clean there, and I had actually was cleaning the countertop, and I had cleaned off the stove. So the kitchen was, eh, okay, I still got work to do, but, you know, if somebody wanted to come in, as long as they didn't want to go into my bedroom, because the dog had chewed up, I bought the dog these rope toys, and he chewed them the fuck up, there's like little pieces of shit everywhere, it's, it's so bad that I actually have to take my foot, my flip-flop foot, and kind of brush a path, there's so much shit, like I have to pick stuff up with a little gripper, and then vacuum tomorrow, that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow, (sighs) whatever, and so I was like, okay, whatever, Luckily, it happened to be clean, because usually it's not clean. So it's like, oh, they want to come in, and it's not clean, whatever. So as I go out there, and it's Cousin Cindy. And she said, because she said it wasn't fair for me to, you know, have to deal with all the banging and clanging and the bullshit that's going on. She wanted to buy me Thanksgiving meal. And I was like, oh. I got to the point right now in my life where if somebody offers something, I'm going to take it. Because, to be honest with you... Gene was supposed to put, um, not one, but two ceiling fans in the, in the upstairs up here. One in the bedroom, one in the living room. That never got done. She was going to do a $40, 40 to $80, uh, plaque for Lucy out front where she's buried. <sighs> Which don't even get me started with all of that, because fuck you, reality. Um, that never happened. And then she was going to give me $200 to buy a fucking jacket, 200 250 to buy a fucking winter jacket. Because the one I have is just like super heavy, and just trying to hobble around with that, it's just just like extra weight, you know what I mean? So she was going to buy me that, of course, and that never happened. And then back in the day when I was living at the house and Dale T was at work, I didn't turn the heat on, so I, I was living in the cold, just because the heat cost money, and I was like being really nice to people, that they didn't really acknowledge any of that, fuck you, but whatever. So now it's like somebody offers me something, I'm like, fuck you, I'm going to take it. So she's like, yeah, I want to give you, you know, and then she's like, oh, I thought instead of getting you a meal, I can, you know, get you stuff you can cook so you can have leftovers. And I'm like, fuck, you're talking my language, a woman. I like leftovers. So she went and got me a turkey, which I didn't have money for. And then she went and got me a Cool Whip. And it was great. Like the two things I needed, she went and got. She then went and bought me two more fucking pies. So now I got like five fucking pies in there. Instead of getting me like one thing of Cool Whip, she ended up getting me like four big tubs of it. And I was like, she's like, here's some Cool Whip. And I'm like, it's a fucking bag of four. What the hell you do? Tell you do? I'm, I'm, I'm happy. She bought me some uh, some juice. Um, she didn't get the right one, but that's okay. I'm not going to say anything because it, it's good. It's not, I wanted that uh, Hawaiian punch. Or not Hawaiian punch. That's what she got me. She got me Hawaiian punch, like actual Hawaiian punch. I wanted the fruit punch from Adirondack, Adirondack fruit punch. Um, luckily, I have a three liter still. I saved one. Um, so we're still good. And this stuff is interesting. I, I kind of wish it was carbonated, but whatever. Um, what else she get? Oh, she got me this huge fucking lasagna. 
this tray of like frozen lasagna, which is great because I can have that after Thanksgiving meal, which is probably like Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in there. And that'll last me a couple days. Because I gotta, I gotta get to at least Friday, and then I can order out again if I have to. Because I'll probably, I'll probably have to drop like 40 bucks and get like three subs. That way I can do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And hopefully we can go Monday, which Dale T, he probably won't. He'll probably want to go Tuesday, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I got all my Thanksgiving shit. I got my pies. I got, I got everything. It's weird how I need shit, and shit just, just, just comes to my house. See, that's how it should be. That's how the world should be. Not that I'm entitled or deserve anything. I deserve nothing, but the fact is... See, it's weird. I was thinking about that today. It's like, because of all the kick in the nuts that I get, yeah... I deserve a turkey. Okay? But the fact is, I deserved all the kick in the nuts. So it, it's literally a paradox. I deserve the kick in the nuts, but because of the kick in the nuts, I deserve good things happening once in a blue moon. Karma, or whatnot, or God, or whatever you want to call it. Anyways, I'm done. I'm down to 5 fucking percent, and i got to render this and upload it, and I probably won't have enough... Uh... My baby, yawning, Mr. Boots, he's a good boy, he's Mr. Boots, oh, he's gonna have Thanksgiving with Daddy, and he's gonna take a trick and shove it up his ass, yes he is. <sighs> Anyways, fuck you, I'm done, I don't talk to you no more, fuck you.